Hey guys, I'm Dips, and today we're going to be creating our very first Warhammer mod for Total War Warhammer 3. Now this video is going to assume that you already have everything set up from the last video, which should be in the top right. Today we'll cover the basics of Rusty Pack File Manager, including opening the game files, creating our mod folder, importing files from the game, and finally editing and enabling our mod. I know this may seem like a lot, but we're going to keep it short, sweet, and simple, and go through it step by step. So let's get into it. Okay. First things first, let's figure out how to see the game's files. The first way, and the way we'll be doing it for this tutorial, is you go to pack file, open pack file, and you need to go to whatever Steam library you have your Warhammer download into. So you go wherever that is, Steam library, Steam apps, common, to the wall, Warhammer 3, data, and you need to scroll down to we find data.pack. So just this one. There are a couple like it, but we want this one specifically. And there you go, it's all opened up. The second way we can get the game files up is as part of dependencies. Um, yours will be located down there. I've just moved mine up. You just drag it and you go under game files and this is the exact same as over here. Okay, so now I've got this up. How do we actually use it? So 90% of the time when we're using under data pack, we're going to be looking at DB, which stands for database. And we're going to be using these files here. So under each folder, there's a fo uh, file called data underscore. And if we want to search for a specific file, which we do today, we're going to come to this search bar down here, and we're going to look up land underscore unit. Okay, so now we want to come up here, and we have the land units table. We can double hook that to keep it stuck up. And this includes all the units in the game, including the legendary lords and heroes, and some of their stats. So if we slide along here, we can see the charge bonus, uh, whatever text they might have, their animations, entity, and importantly for today, melee attack and melee defense. So today we're going to be editing Scarbrand stats. So we want to come down to the search bar down here, and this search bar only searches one column at a time, so you can see which column that is here. So today we're going to search key, which is like the um, unit's name in the game files. And we're just going to type in his name. Some of them can be abbreviated, but we chose Scarbrand because he's not. So that's him here. Now, we'll keep this here, and we're going to go create our mod file. Okay, so this is actually going to be the easiest part of the tutorial. So what we need to do is, because we want to keep the data pack on the other window, we just need to create a new window of RPFM. You can just click that by clicking it once. And then we want to go to, once it's open, My Mod, New My Mod. And you can just call this whatever you want as long as it has no spaces in it. So I'm just going to call it example mod. You guys can abbreviate your name or whatever you guys want to do. And there we go. Okay, so now we know where the game's files are, and now we know how to create our new blank mod file. How do we actually get files into here? So let's go through that. So we're going to left click the top of example my example mod dot pack, and you want to right click, and you have these two here. Now it's possible to use it through add and get files in there, but that's kind of a pain and it is only really used under very niche circumstances. So we're gonna to go to create and create DB. So you have three bars here, right? Now this top bar will automatically be the same as your pack file name for your mod, and it should always be that. The second bar is all the available files we can import. And the bottom bar is a search bar. So we wanna add land, underscore unit. So we swipe that, and then we can have a look at the list of everything that has land underscore unit in it. And we just want this basic table here. So it should look exactly like this apart from the name. And then you can just click create. Okay, so now I've got this, we can left click our file, and this should look pretty familiar because these are the exact same columns that we had over in the pack file. Right, so. How do we add a row? That's really easy. We can just right click and click add row. But you don't exactly want to have to write everything in here. So let's go back over to our pack file database and we can left click the key and then we're just going to hold shift and hold the arrow key all the way to the end. And then we can right click, copy, just copy. And then we want to come back over to our example pack and we can then right click and where is it? 
paste. And there we go. So if you want to resize the columns, you just got to right click and come down here to resize columns. And let's just explain what we actually have here. So if we were to go into Warhammer 2 and enable this mod, we would replace Scarbrand's table or part of the table with our table, which at the moment is completely identical. So let's change it. So really easy. We just want to come over to melee attack and melee defense just up here. And we are going to turn both of those to one. So just double click and just replace what's in there. Then importantly, we're going to go up to the back file and go save and then click install. Now just launch the game. Okay, so we have the directory up and we want to go to mod manager and we won't have as many here probably, but so we want to scroll down and click example mod and then just click play. It'll come up with this and we can just click play again. Okay, so once we're in the game, we want to go into battle, skirmish versus AI. I want to come up here and go to corn. And then we want to have a look at Scarbrand. And would you look at that? He's got one melee attack and one melee defense. Congrats, you officially created your first mod. Now, if you did enjoy, like and subscribing is the best way to let me know. Now, if you're looking on what to do next, I'd recommend trying to add or subtract abilities and attributes from units. And there's a guide on how to do that down in the description. As always, thanks for watching.